First, um, in, in June, June 18th to the 25th, we will be going to Oaxaca, Mexico to work with Joe and Amy Hendrigsman. Don't you love the way I can say Oaxaca now? I mean, it's... Until a year ago when I did this, it was really rough, me trying to figure out how to say Oaxaca, okay, but I, I can say it now. Why are we going? We're going to develop a world vision in the, teams, in, the, in the lives of the team that goes. You know, we go and we do a lot of good work. We'll do evangelism. We'll do discipleship. We'll do a lot of different things, but we don't want to just accomplish things there. We want God to accomplish his work in our life, and so much of what we do We'll do that. So let me give you some, some details on it. The cost of the trip, roughly 1000 to $1,200, depending on, on airfare, transportation, all that kind of good stuff, okay? Um, on March the 20th, I know that's just about two months away, a little less than two months away. March the 20th will be the, the date that you've, you, know, you need to pray about it over the next two months, okay? If God tells you to go, March the 20th, I need you to come to that meeting. We'll have it after church. Um, and you need to come with your passport. So number one, if you don't have a passport, if or if it has expired or is going to expire, you need to hop on that tomorrow, <laughs> okay? Because passports are taking longer to get done, okay? But you need to come with your passport and then $800 because I'll be booking you a flight to go. You bring me $800, I'm figuring you're serious about going, okay? Uh, what will we be doing? It'll be a week of sharing the gospel with Oaxaca through evangelism. And then I am real excited. I've, over the last couple weeks, I've confirmed this with uh, Joe Hendricksman. We're going to be taking, we're just going to be finishing up at the first part of June, it's the first week of June, is our VBSC. We're going to be taking that VBSC vacation Bible sports camp to Oaxaca. Joe's excited. He's got some parks around uh, the church where they, where they meet that he can get into. We can reserve those and we'll be able to do a VBSC right there in Oaxaca. And it'll give us a chance to, uh, to teach the kids, you know, some sports and all that kind of good stuff. But more importantly, the Bible and then an inroad for him and his church into the lives of some people there, okay? So that's the first trip. Uh, team, team training, if you're, if you're worried about, well, Randy, I've never gone and I've never shared the gospel with somebody, don't worry about it. We will have you prepared. Brian will be working with me, I'm sure. We will have everyone prepared to share the gospel when you get to Oaxaca. All right, so the second trip, um, June the, I'm sorry, let me, that's Oaxaca. Uh, the second one is Mexico City, and it will be July the 30th through August the 6th. Again, same thing, to develop a world vision in the lives of our team members. The cost, 1500 to 1800 depending on all those things, you know, airfare and transportation, all that kind of good stuff. Commitment day for this one, it's about a month past, month or two months past Oaxaca. So we will start training on May the 1st. So again, on May the 1st, passport, $800, I'm booking you a flight to go, okay? That week, we will, we will be working with good news in, in good news in action. Of course, Steve Kern was just with us at our um, Acts 1-8 conference back in, in October. So you guys are familiar with, with good news in action. And essentially what it is, is we'll be going into neighborhoods and we'll be sharing the gospel, okay? We use the big question track. Um, if you were to die today, do you know where you'd spend an eternity? That's a very simple in to ask people, you know, do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? But the second part of that, so when, whenever they have Good News in Action has a trip to one of the different countries, about two, three weeks later, they'll send a follow-up team that will go out and, you know, we, we get anywhere from 200 to 900 cards of people that make a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And trying to follow up with them, it's too hard for the church to do on their own. So they send a team from El Salvador to help with that. Well, we started back in 2008 or 2009. We took to Guatemala a separate team that went simply to disciple. Okay. Now, we're not going to take them through 16 lessons of discipleship, but what we do is take 
In Spanish, the church is discipleship lessons, usually the first three. If you get through one, that's really great. And that first one, of course, is salvation. And if you get the opportunity the next day to sit down with an individual that made a profession of faith and talk with them about what they did, that really solidifies them. And it, it, it just, for that church in Guatemala, they saw an immediate response to people. And so Steve has asked us if we would do that again this year in, uh, in Mexico City. So we're looking very forward to that. Uh, the second point here, okay, so we can go by going, okay? We can get involved in missions by going to the field. The second thing that we can do is we can go by giving, okay? Philippians chapter 4 is up there on the screen. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 through 16 says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. The church at Philippi, when Paul was on his missionary journey, gave consistently. You notice he said he was, that they were the only church that gave to his need. They gave consistently financially so that he could continue the work of spreading the gospel. When he was in Thessalonica, they gave on multiple occasions to meet his physical needs. And this is just one example. I mean, you can see through Scripture where churches did that very thing. So we can, we can do that. We can go by simply giving. So what I want to do, if you happen to be kind of new to, to First Bible Baptist Church, I kind of want to give you a little background of how mission support works in our church, okay? I've been the missions pastor here for a number of years, and, and then several years ago, Pastor Mark and I decided to, to create what is called the mission support team. And this team is made up currently of eight individuals. They are Pastor Mark Brown, Bobby Bonner, uh, Mike Sidebottom, Debbie Summers, Barbara Johnson, Adam Hay, Brian Calloway, and myself. And we meet about six times a year, about basically about every other month. We develop guidelines for the support of our missionaries. We prayerfully consider new missionaries. Myself, Pastor Mark, Bobby, get uh, numerous requests from missionaries that we don't know, okay, who desire financial support from this church. And while probably most of them are very deserving of that support, we are very specific with who we do support. And part of that decision-making process when trying to decide to take on a new missionary is prayer. And then also those guidelines that we have, okay? We have a budget and only so much money, and we want to definitely support um, those that God leads us to. You know, there's a lot of churches across the states. You can talk to Bobby or, or Brian who've gone out, done the deputation trail and that sort of thing. There's a lot of churches that support missionaries at $10 to $50 a month. And that's great because God can take anything and multiply it. You saw one of those pictures up of the, the two fishes and the five loaves. I mean, a perfect example of God, how God can multiply. But this church supports missionaries at a minimum, our church right here, at a minimum of $100 a month. And that's actually only three, three of the missionaries on the list that, that get 100 Everyone else is, is everywhere from $200 to $500 a month, okay? So we prayerfully consider this budget for supporting our missionaries. And as of January of this year, we now send $7,700 per month out to our different missionaries. That's just, I mean, that is just amazing. And this does not include individual support of our church members. So you go on to the next screen. Um, amount given to missions in 2021, and Pastor Mark kind of corrected me in between services here, okay? So that amount, 87,638, is, is technically our budgeted amount, okay? Um, because then the, the church members, I wasn't paying enough attention when I put this together, the, the church members, you and I in this body, a lot of us will support individual missionaries or works or that sort of thing throughout. So just to give you an example, okay, January, the checks have gone out uh, for our missionary support. And that total check, those total checks were $11,775. So we saw the church budget earlier was $7,700. Uh, 
And, and that is what the church, by faith, has committed to our missionaries. So regardless of what, what the church finances look like, $7,700 is going out the door to our missionaries, okay? Now, there was an extra $4,075. Where did that come from? That comes from you and I, members of this church, that just God touches you to give to an individual. I'll give you an example here. Back in October at our, at our Acts 1-8 conference, when Jose uh, Volter was with us from Honduras, uh, we had the, the, uh, the little um, time out with the missionaries in the coffee house before the services each and every night. And if you didn't get a chance to make those, you know, I'm sure we'll be doing that again this year. I'd really encourage you. That's a time to really just get to hear the heartbeat of some of the, the missionaries that are here. Well, he was talking about with the pandemic and, and they've gone so digital with so many different things. Um, that they needed a good camera. And somebody in the crowd asked, well, how much would that camera cost? And I don't remember what he said, but um, he, said, he said an amount. And so then in the next week or two, that individual on their offering envelope put a little note, Jose Volter, Honduras, camera, something like that. I get a call from, uh, from the treasurer um, with no names, so I don't know who, who the person is either because he doesn't give me names. But he said, camera, Jose Volter, what is this about? <laughs> Explained it, and that money goes to Jose so that he can then meet the need that he needs to do. So that's kind of the way uh, missions at First Bible works, okay? Um, the last thing out of Matthew chapter 28 that I think that we can see is that we can, the, the third way that we can go to the world, that we can be involved in missions. And this one is so very important, and that is by praying, okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 2 says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Paul tells the church of Thessalonica here, to pray for them, pray for his missionary team. And he says for two reasons, okay? And the first one, and the most important one, obviously, is that the word of the gospel, the word of the Lord, the gospel, may have free course and be glorified in, in their mission work. And then the second thing is, is that they would be delivered from unreasonable men, or in other words, delivered from harm. So we should be praying for our missionaries. We need to specifically pray that the gospel message would go forth clearly from them and that it would affect the hearts and lives of the people that they are trying to reach. But secondly, we need to pray for their safety, for their physical well-being. You know, other parts of the world are not like the United States, okay? I gave this example. You know, we just recently you saw up in the video uh, some obvious recent pictures uh, from Honduras back in August because if you notice, we all had these little things on called masks, okay? Um, and when you leave this country, um, when we left this country, we were told, you know, there were several things, that are, do this, do this, do that, wear a mask. It's not an option, okay, when you go to another part of the world. You may have seen pictures of us all lined up to go into a mall you have to step on this stupid little thing that supposedly cleans your feet off or something, I don't know, and then take your temperature and, and use it. I mean, you do all these things, and that's just the way it is. I know that's just a minor thing, but our missionaries on a daily basis face the possibility of physical harm that you and I just a lot of times don't know anything about. So today, I, I, I just want to take a few minutes, okay? As, as quick as I can get through this. In, in this church, we, we support 34 total different missionaries, okay, around the world, here in the United States and around the world. But we have two basic areas that we really focus on. One is Central and South America, and of course, this, the, the map up here is Central America and the top part of South America. Um, and specifically, and we have Steve Kern and three of the missionaries with us from good news in action to the different countries. Specifically, we, we reach out to, 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 with good news in action, okay, to reach out to different parts of 
Central America and the works that they have started. They have started a total of six works throughout Central and South America. And so I want to focus really on them. I'll touch on some of the other ones as well, but these seven I really want to focus on. So the first one here is Steve Kern. Steve Kern um, and his wife Pam have been in El Salvador since 1986. Um, the last two years have been a, a real challenge like it is with most missionaries. You know, you talk to any of the, the group that meets over here on a Sunday morning and prays for our missionaries over the last two years, it has been all about COVID, all about COVID and, and how it has really hampered their ministry. But, but they've taken there in El Salvador and they've really, you know, like they do anything, they've used it and they've, they've overcome the circumstances. And so they really, they started a seventh campus, I think it is, and that campus is a digital campus. And so it's nothing more than, than them preaching online, okay? Um, Managua, Nicaragua, Managua, Nicaragua, that was the very first work, and it was started by a man by the name of uh, Felix Gonzalez. He has since retired, and Rodrigo Diaz is now the, the missionary in charge there. And um, here's, here's a word from Rodrigo on this past year. He says, we cannot deny that it has been a difficult year for everyone. In our case, we had another strong outbreak of COVID um, in, the, in the past few months. This made the attendance of the congregation decrease once again, and we lost one of our members due to the virus. The, country, the country's socio-political and economic crisis also continued to generate a climate of tension among many citizens. But in the midst of all this, we cannot deny that we have seen the hand of God providing for us at all times. We give him all the glory for this. As the year 2021 is closing, everything we did and also what we could not do in ministry comes to mind. We could become frustrated for not having been able to do everything we wanted to do or for not seeing the growth or our desired results. However, we can trust the promise that the Apostle Paul gives in Philippians 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. We can trust that our God is in control, and he is, and that uh, we are not a finished product yet. We are in the process of becoming more like Christ. Going on to Nelson, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because Nelson was with us just in October. Um, but basically, he said, towards the end of the year, they were begin to, able to begin to do face-to-face -face meetings again. And so they stepped out on a limb, and they had a Christmas banquet, a qu Christmas dinner. And they really didn't know how it was going to go, and it went really great. They had a lot of members that hadn't been there since the pandemic began back in, in uh, March of 20. And so they were very excited uh, to see, you know, just the success that God brought them in that venture. Jose Volter in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. Of course, he was with us in October, so, so I don't want to spend a lot of time but again, same thing with them, okay? Remember, this is a church that started just about a month, uh, sorry, about a year prior to the pandemic. And so things were going well, had people saved, and then all of a sudden the pandemic hits and everybody's gone. And so then in, in August, when things are starting to open back up a lot, back in August, we were able to take our team down there and they have seen <clears throat> they have seen such fruit from that trip it's it's just amazing to see what God has done but they were also able to use the uh, the the holiday season they had a play that their kids did they put on these dramas uh, for the for the um, the community and they were able to see a lot of people come to know Christ, but as much as, as anything, they were able to see their church members get involved in ministry and evangelism. Um, in San Jose, Costa Rica, um, Edwin Bajarno, and again, I don't know him because the, the gentleman that was there for years was a man by the name of Rodolfo, and so I haven't met Edwin yet. One of these days we'll get back. Again, same thing, slow year, slow last couple of years. But at Christmas time, things seemed to be loosening up a lot again. And so they did the very same thing, Christmas presentations. But they did a little different. They went out to four different parks near, near the church, 
and they even had the city get involved, give them the permits, and then help advertise their program. So it was really great. He says here that um, so much was the scope that at the end of the four presentations, about 1,000 people were exposed to the gospel, <clears throat> excuse me, and about 70 professions of faith were made, and 25 contacts, of which one family of four and a young woman are faithfully attending church. That is why, obviously, they, they do all the things that they do to get the message out, but also just to continually make contacts with um, different people, get them into the church. Um, so that's, that's San Jose. The next one is Mexico City. Now, Mexico City, of course, is where we're going to be going, so I thought, well, I may not know the pastor there. If any of you have been, I know several around here have, have been to Guatemala with me, you'll remember uh, the guy that was uh, basically uh, Nelson's associate, Javier. You know, he had the big hair, you know, and everything. Javier is, is now, he's, he's gone to Mexico City, and he is the lead pastor uh, down in Mexico City. So looking forward to this summer, reconnecting with him and getting, getting to, to do a work with him. Basically what he said, okay, here is, um, he said, as missionaries, the month of October was a very spe special month here in Mexico due to the preparations for the Day of the Dead, November 1st, uh, which started a month before all the preparations. The traditions were witnessed we witnessed impressed us with the strength and passion with which they are lived by. Now at this time of year, two feelings overwhelm us, the missionaries. Astonishment due to the magnitude of the perception that society has about death and the sadness because the Halloween and Day of the Dead celebrations are stronger than Christmas. He said, we dream that someday the passion for Christmas and the joy for the hope of eternal life will be even greater than it is lived around um, death here in Mexico. And that is their goal, obviously, to bring life. I, I don't think I mentioned it here. All of the churches that are started by the work in El Salvador bear the same name as the church in El Salvador, and that is Vida Nueva, which means in Spanish, new life. And that's their purpose, is to bring a new life to the people. And the last one that we have here is David Godron in uh, Bogota, Colombia. He was with us, of course, and so I don't want to spend a lot of time on him. He was able this year to baptize 14 people that made a, um, a profession of faith. And that is, just, <clears throat> that is just an amazing feat to see that happen in that society. All right, moving on down. I told you, we've already covered on this map of Central and South America, of course, those seven that we just talked about. <clears throat> but I want to remind you all about um, some other missionaries that we have there that we've, we've known for a long time. Up at the top of the screen, how well can you guys see that? Oh, that's pretty good, okay. Um, at the top of the screen, we've got Larry and Tammy Allred in Merida, Mexico. Uh, they've been there for over 20 years now, and they continue to see people saved and now they have three churches that have started out of the main church uh, that, they, that they began so many years ago. To the east of them in the Dominican Republic is Lee and Heather Carter. Um, and again, for Lee and Heather, it's been a challenging year, but, but God's been doing some great works. Remember, this is a couple. Of course, so many of us know Lee and Heather so well. But they left in July of 2020 during the midst of a pandemic and went to uh, the Dominican Republic. Uh, just amazing to me what, what he's done. Their daughter has gotten married since they've been down there. Um, and again, they just continue to see people get saved, to see people get saved, and then to disciple them. I also want to take a note and just mention, Lee and Heather uh, will be coming back to the States, actually this month, or the month of February. Um, their, their son... Travis, which many of you know, thank you so much. <laughs> I had one down there and I didn't want to go get it. Um, have been, uh, Travis is in the military and he's going to be uh, going overseas. His wife is very pregnant, seven, eight months pregnant, something, seven months pregnant. Um, and so they are coming up, Lee and Heather, to move uh, his son and daughter-in-law from Georgia to Arizona. 
And Lee has asked, and it's, it's hard for Lee to do this, but Lee has asked uh, if anybody in this church, if you would like to participate, um, you can drop off a, um, a card, um, an American Express card, Visa, uh, MasterCard, gas card, food restaurant cards, anything like that. If you'd like to help out, because they're going to be here for two or three months, and that's not technically in their budget as missionaries, okay? So um, they've gotten the car taken care of, and for the most part, they'll be able to stay with family, friends, and that sort of thing. But if you'd like to be involved, they will be with us two weeks from today. And so we'd like to give them whatever this church provides. So in the next two weeks, if you can drop off anything uh, to Mindy at the church office, um, they would really appreciate that. Going to the west from there, uh, to the far side of the map, is Joe and Amy Hendridsman in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, again, rough year, okay? They had a lot of death. Uh, Amy lost her mom this year to uh, COVID, and they had a church member that lost his, his, <clears throat> his 11-year-old brother uh, in a drowning accident. But through that all, they had the opportunity to share the gospel, to share the gospel with different people in the community. Always, 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 Joe and Amy take that opportunity to, to, to evangelize and to share God's word. They also have dealt with, with COVID, but they are, are doing much better now. Uh, down at the bottom of the map, right about the middle, you'll see uh, Paul Clark. Paul Clark is um, a missionary to Columbia. Uh, he has a, a ministry he started uh, called Columbia for Christ. He started a church way back in the 80s, okay, um, there in Bogota. And um, he is now, they have sent out so many missionaries over the years, not just to, to Colombia, but literally around the world. And for me personally, that was my very first mission trip uh, back in 1986 was to Bogota uh, to work with Paul Clark. To me, it's, it's such a blessing to see missionaries that have been sticking with it for year after year after year, like, like Paul Clark and, and like uh, the Kearns. And then at the very bottom on the far left is um, Cody and Millie Walker. Cody and Millie are in Argentina, and I could not quite get that on the map because it is way down at the, at the southern tip down there. So um, my battery just died, so uh, we'll, we'll be doing this on the fly for the rest of the way, okay? Um, Cody and Millie are um, doing a great work. They said that they were able to use Thanksgiving as the highlight of the year and to be able to invite all the church members and family over for a Thanksgiving dinner. Couldn't find a turkey, uh, apparently, but so they had chicken, okay? But chicken... You know, anything tastes like chicken anyway when you go on the, on the mission field. So to our map of the United States, okay? So we'll just start down in the bottom right corner. Um, in the middle, you've got um, um, Greg Tyler and then Mickey Weston. Both of these guys are reaching a similar audience and a very difficult one, okay? So um, Greg Tyler is a, is a chaplain for the Houston Texans and then... Mickey Weston is a chaplain for the Chicago White Sox. He's with a, an organization called um, Unlimited Potential. And so both of these guys are ministering to, to, to guys that have two other gods, okay? Money and professional sports. And so it's a very difficult, um, a very difficult group um, that, that they work with. Um, go up to the, to the center of, of the screen and you'll see Ron Green with Keyser at the cross. Now this is the total extreme from uh, where the other two guys are at. Ron Green and his team go into to prisons here in the state of Missouri. And that is a, a, a group that he is ministering to that most of us won't go to, okay? I mean, if we're just honest, we don't, we don't wanna go there. It, it makes us nervous, I mean, whatever the case may be, but these are guys that need Jesus just the same as those baseball and football players do. So Ron is just a special guy. He's just taken over for Gene Pirtle, which we knew for many, many years. Uh, to the right of there is Aaron Shear with Center Shot Ministries. Of course, he was just with us back in October for our, 
our October Sunday, and so I won't spend a lot of time on, on him. But he basically, if you weren't here, he uses a bow and arrow to, uh, to share Jesus Christ and what Christ can do in their life. Uh, down in the bottom left corner is Manuel and Martha Estebane. Unfortunately, this last year, if you, if you don't know, um, um, Manuel lost his, his fight to cancer back in the summer, I think it was. So pray for Martha, okay? This church has continued to support Martha, okay? I mean, she is she's a godly woman. She is still, I mean, her, obviously her ministry has changed somewhat, but she's, she's a godly woman that is still continuing the, the, the fight. And so we've stayed behind her. Some churches, you know, not having a man on the field might drop her, but we are standing behind her because we believe in what she is doing. And then on the top, um, the top left is uh, Gorn and Gina Hunyak, and unfortunately, Gorn lost Gina, <clears throat> excuse me, Gina back in December uh, to a brain tumor. And so be praying for Gorn. I mean, it's a big, big transition in his life at this point in time. Um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but um, he said this year in their summer camps, they were up 40% from 2019, and they, they had 800 and some odd kids, teens and kids, and I think he said 125 that made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. And then he gave a, a total over the last 17 years, they've had 35,000 kids, teenagers come through <clears throat> their camps and everything during the summer times. And I want to say he said 1,755 kids have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That's just an awesome, awesome, incredible thing. So be praying for him in this transition of his life. And my goodness, I almost missed to the right there. And how could I do that? Larry, I don't have my notes. So Larry and Charlotte Franklin... Larry and Charlotte Franklin, again, another one of those couples that have been going at it for years because just to age them, okay, at Kansas City Baptist Temple, he was my children's pastor, okay? And I'm no spring chicken, okay? So <laughs> Larry and Charlotte, love these two. I, I mean, talking about faithfulness, I mean, you, you, won't, you won't find anybody more faithful to them. Just continue the work, continue the work, continue the work. Pray for them and for the, uh, for the of course, the um, clean heart track that they, how many languages do you have that in? Languages. Amen. So, I mean, just a simple, simple tool to be able to present Jesus Christ to people. So if you've never seen one, Get with somebody. We've got them out in the lobby. Larry would love to go through it with you and explain how you can use that. I know so many people, speaking of Halloween, will put those into to candy bags for kids, okay, and if have the opportunity to explain it. Okay, um, on our, our Europe map, going up to the top left corner, you see Brian and Mindy Clark in London, England. Brian this year um, was able to ordain a guy that he had won to Christ in the, the high street. If you've been with me, you know what I'm talking about, the high street. He won him to Christ, discipled him, and now trained him, and he's ordained. And he's going to be taking over the work there uh, where they're at in North Bromley, and Brian and Mindy are just going to be going to another location to start it all over again. Up in the top right, top center, I didn't have a picture of Herbert and Handel Patty. Herbert and Patty Handel. Uh, they are in Macedonia, and they actually minister to Albanians in Macedonia. It's a long story, but, but uh, pray for them. It's a very, very difficult work that they do. Uh, down on the, on the left side, David and Sarah Booth in Portugal, okay? A lot of their ministry is to the deaf. Now, they, they, they minister to other people. But a lot of their ministry is to the deaf, and with the pandemic, it's been very difficult because the deaf won't come, and then there's no way for them to minister to them. So be praying for that. Uh, bottom center is Talant, um, Talant Krechi, and then also Sazan Hoxhaj in Duras, Albania. Both of these guys were a product of Jeff Bartel, that was a missionary in Albania for so many years. Um, 
Talant is now pastoring that work. And when, when I was there back in 2004, they were just sending a work out to Duras, which is kind of like a, a suburb of Tirana. And both of those churches now are sending out missionaries of their own. And then up in the center is Chad and Ray Brockmeyer. Of course, a lot of us are familiar with Chad and Ray. And they've been on the field now for less than a month. Okay, They left January the 10th. Um, and I've been getting them in a group text, group chat with uh, Bobby and I think Adam and Chad. And just, I mean, it's, you know, they're getting their feet on the ground, but they are hitting the ground running, okay? And just looking for any opportunity to minister to people. But as you, you heard him say, they joined a work that was there that was already established. And so um, just be praying for them. I mean, a lot of getting used to the culture and all that kind of stuff, even though they've, they've been there many times. And then our last map here, of course, is Africa. And, and to the right, I just kind of included India because it would fit on the screen, okay? So we've got up in the top right corner, David Burrow, and then about in the middle there is Fredgy John. Both of them work with TTI, which stands for the Timothy Training Initiative. Um, and, and they are both just... You know, they weathered through um, COVID and, and, and everything else and didn't really let it slow them down. I know David had COVID. I don't know if uh, Fredgy ever did. They just continue going, okay, because quite honestly, they face so many more hardships than what you and I can even begin. If you could sit down and read some of the letters, um, Nathaniel and, and Lana keep up with, with David on a monthly basis and Boy, if you could hear some of the suffering that they go through that you and I have no idea. So be, be praying for them. Um, go down here to the bottom right, Johannes and Kittist Gatani. Um, he has a deaf school in Zambia. And back in 2014, um, we took a team and worked specifically with Johannes. Man, what a, what a great time. And for me, the, probably the, the biggest joy uh, of my time in Africa as my daughter went on that trip. And so Katie, you know, it's just, you get out of your world, you get out of your comfort zone, and you go to a place where kids just appreciate the little things. I will never forget the thing that we did on that trip. You guys that are with me, that were with me will remember. I, we ended the, the time with the kids, and, and um, Liz Mendez uh, works for Ford, and somebody that she works with had given her hundred dollars and said you'll know what to do with it with the times right and she took that hundred dollars and bought the kids ice cream and they had never had ice cream before and to see the joy on their faces um it's just i mean it'll grip your heart and it just it won't let go top top up there stacy you made another picture okay because i was limited on my pictures of gomaju Gomaju is um, Johannes's mother, okay? Well, technically his aunt, okay? His mother died when he was very young, and she raised him. She is deaf, and she ministers to the deaf in, um, in Ethiopia, which is his, his homeland. He and Kit's homeland is Ethiopia. And if you ever get to go to Zambia, then you get to go to Lusaka and to um, Johannes's house. You'll probably be treated to... Ethiopian coffee roasted over the fire. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Uh, down in the center, Sean and Jerry Vance. Uh, he sent me a, a, a lot of stuff to read, and I, it's here in the notes that I don't have. Um, and so the main gist of it was this year they have their elections. And he said their elections are going to be very similar to what we just went through here in the United States. And so he asked us to specifically pray that God would put the man in that he has ordained, and number two, for their safety, because they're in a, in a tough part of that world. Um, down on the bottom left, Joe and Sherry Hayden. Um, Joe and Sherry, we've only been uh, minister, or, I mean, uh, supporting for a couple of, couple of years now. Um, they both this year have had a lot of health issues, but they are back on the field. I just got an uh, email or, or a message from him recently. Uh, he had to have a spinal infusion or something done and the cost was just astronomical and he just sent me a message and said God just took care of care of it all so they are back on the field 
And he said Satan is already just throwing, throwing the darts at him. So uh, top left corner is Dan and Jan Jellowick. Um, they are, they've, again, like so many people, he's lost family members, loved ones uh, to COVID, so be praying for them. They just had a shipment of 2,500 Bibles in their language that are on their way. It's probably on a ship right now, and they should have it by May. They are so excited about that. And then the last two on the left there, um, of course, the top one, you all know, Alex and Crystal uh, Chippy. They were, of course, with us for about three months last, last year, 2020. Um, be praying for them. Crystal, it's on Facebook, so I guess I can say this. Um, Crystal is, is pregnant again, so be praying for that. Be praying for the baby and that it all goes well. I know she was on bed rest um, recently, um, and so she just really needs to try and take it easy, which is hard because she's a very busy lady. Uh, and then right below them is Elijah Poulet. Um, and we got updates from both of them. And all my notes are on this dead tablet up here. Um, and I really don't have time to go through it all anyway. But that is all the things that are going on. That's a recap from Elijah. Basically, so that you, you, many of you will remember about a year ago, Brian, God called him back uh, here to us. <clears throat> and Elijah has taken over the work. I mean, we've transitioned from the American missionaries over to the national, and they are just doing an, an, an astonishing work. And I've got all that there. If you really want to know what's going on, email me. I'll send you, I'll send you the info, okay? And then with Alex and Crystal, really the ministry focused on the work that they are doing, soccer, okay? Soccer is a big one. It's, it's been going really well. He said that they're going to be hosting a soccer tournament um, in, in coinciding with the opening of the side-by-side -side building. That building is now complete, he said, and that is just awesome. Brian started the project when, we, when he was there. So many of us have, have given money over the years to that project. It is done. They need to furnish it, but it's done and ready to go. They're going to have a grand opening of that. And then, of course, the other big ministry opportunities that they're involved in is um, the Buckets for Moms, which, of course, Tammy started when she was there, and then the, uh, the menstrual kits for uh, the girls that are at risk. And I know the ladies in this church meet, is it every Tuesday? Okay. Meet every Tuesday um, and do the sewing, and, and I guess if you guys can sew, we don't want to be exclusive here, okay? So if you can sew, I would assume that you would take it, right? Okay. Meet with Tammy if you have any questions about it. She can fill you on, on all of that, okay? And then a lot of things going on, the physical works of the mission station. The wall is crumbling, just different things going on that they need to take care of. And so Alex kind of laid, laid all that out. Okay, so as a recap here. What about you? Okay, let's bring this home today. What about you? 2022, goodness, the first month is almost gone. How will you be involved in missions at, at, at BEC in this year? We've laid it out for you, okay? You can, you can be involved by going, okay? Those two trips to Oaxaca and Mexico City this year. You know, I, I need 30 to 45 people between the two trips, okay? I don't like going by myself, okay? So I really, I really encourage you, pray about it and see whether or not God would have you go on one of those trips. You, go by get, you can go to the field by giving, okay? Missionaries need financial support, okay? It's an ongoing need. It's unfortunately in the world that we live in, ministry takes dollars. But you know what? God owns all of the dollars, okay? It's just a matter of, you and I opening up our pockets and giving it, okay? And then the last thing we can do is we can go to the field by praying. Um, every Sunday morning, right over here, and we've grown this year. It's so exciting to me. Uh, for, for many years, it was me and Debbie and, and Jay, and then we added Nathaniel and, um, and Lana, and then we've had Maddox, and we've had Patty, and we've had Brian Houston. It's been great to see how God has just has been, has been growing that group over there. So if you ever want to join us right over there, if you don't want to come in, 
I always have it on Zoom, okay? So you can always join us on Zoom. But what we do is we break up those 34 missionaries to, in four different, four different groups, and we pray for a group a week. This morning we prayed for Jerusalem, okay? And so we, we contact our missionaries and we get very specific prayer requests from them so that we can pray specifically for them. Um, Africa prayer team, okay? We have a team specifically Africa because it's a big group. Linda and I host that in our house on the third Friday of every month, okay? I always tell people, put it on your calendar, okay? It's always the same. Third Friday of every month, we meet, and we, again, we pray specifically for missionaries. I put that on Zoom if you need it as well. And then the last one coming soon is Latin America, okay? Because, again, that's a big part of what we support, so Latin America is, is coming soon, all right? Guys, I've covered a lot today, um, but that's really, that slide right there is my challenge for you today. How are you going to get involved in missions this year? Let's stand. I'll, I'll have a word of prayer. If you feel led to come down and pray um, about God, what God would have you do this year in missions, feel free. Come forward. Um, I'll spend some time in prayer, and then when we're done, we'll be dismissed. Father God, I just want to thank you so much for this day, Lord. Um, thank you for uh, the time that we've had, Lord, just to gather in your house and worship and praise your name. Uh, Lord, the music this morning, just incredible, just, um, you know, bringing us to the throne of grace and, and preparing us. And then, Lord, seeing the video and just the, the last 25 years of missions and how, Lord God, your favor has truly been upon this church and upon this work. And God, you... Um, You've taken us just literally all around the world. Really, it's just looking up there and, and seeing all the different people over the years that, and I really didn't even scratch the surface with that, God, but seeing all the people that have been involved in, in missions throughout the years, just, Lord, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And, and God, you are a great God. And, and Lord, as we, as we really contemplate this year, 2022, God, I pray that this would be a year that we go even further. In, in missions at FBBC. Lord, it's all about bringing glory to your name. Uh, it's not about, you know, checking off a bucket list. Yep, been to Oaxaca. Yep, been to Mexico City. God, it's about reaching out to the people of those lands with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about, Lord. That's what it's all about. So God, I, I pray that you would just use this little church here in Blue Springs, Missouri to do great things for you. Lord, we love you. Dismiss us with your blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. And go 